welcome to my channel. In today's video lecture, I'm going to talk about some really lesser known metaphysical poets and some really lesser known metaphysical poetry. But before we look at such poems, let me first tell you a bit about metaphysical poetry and what it is all about. Metaphysical poetry is a term which was coined by Samuel Johnson in his most remarkable work which is called Lives of Eminent English Poets. Yes guys, when John Donne and other metaphysical poets were writing, they were not aware of the concept of metaphysical poetry. They, they were just writing according to what came from within. But after 100 years when Samuel Johnson looked at the works of such writers, he was able to club them together seeing the common characteristics that they possessed. And that is when he terms the, uh, coined the term metaphysical poets and he composed a list of metaphysical poets who were writing according to the set characteristics that he had in his mind. Now, if you look at this word metaphysical, you will know that metaphysical word is self-explanatory. If you divide this word into two chunks, you will see meta means beyond or above, whereas physical is the physical world. Now, anything which is beyond physical world is the thematic concern of metaphysical poets. For example, all these metaphysical poets talked about the concept of God, talked about the abstract concept of love. So they were trying to address and answer questions which cannot be explained by science. So anything which cannot be explained by science, which cannot be quantified, which cannot be measured, is the thematic concern of metaphysical poetry. One very important thing that you must remember is that the reason why we all love reading the works of John Donne and other metaphysical poets is that they use several excellent literary devices. For example, they use paradox, puns, they use conceits a lot in their literary work. Now, conceits are some amazing comparisons that you draw between two actually different set of things. For example, there's a poem by John Donne which says uh, that lovers are compared to two legs of compass. So, two lovers who are separated due to several reasons are compared to two legs of compass who are separated but still they are joined on the top. This is how they used to compare totally you know, different set of things together and that is what is said to be the core uh, reason why we all love metaphysical poets. The main themes that metaphysical poets used are religion, then they also talked about love, they talked about this theme of carpe diem. Carpe diem means live each and every movement to the fullest. Uh, if you have ever read newspaper articles on this controversial issue of YOLO and YODO, like Today in 21st century there is this prominent question which is popping up in the head of all youngsters that whether we should live our life according to the YOLO principle or YODO principle. Now YOLO principle says you only live once whereas YODO says you only die once. To simplify it I would like to tell you that uh, you know YOLO principle is like you need to make the best of each and every moment. Don't think about sin, don't think about right and wrong, just live the movement, take pleasure, just get into the realm of pleasure seeking world whereas on the other hand we have Yodo principle which walks along the line of Buddhism and which says that this entire world is a Maya jar, this entire world is an illusion and you need to make your way towards salvation by renouncing and by leaving all the materialistic pleasures and not devoting your energy and time into that. So these are two contradictory philosophies that you will find in 21st century. During that time when John Donne and other metaphysical poets were writing, they used to write about YOLO principle to which they gave the term carpe diem. Carpe diem means that you need to live this life to the fullest. Each and every moment you need to rejoice and you need to make the best use of it. So that was the core principle of metaphysical poetry. Now let's look at some really really important metaphysical poets and poetry which you must remember if you are preparing for UTC Net English. So the first work that we are going to talk about is Devotions Upon Emergent Occasions. Now almost all of us are aware of John Donne's famous poetry like Flea, Sun Rising, Valediction Forbidden Morning, Batter My Heart. But hardly any of us actually know that he has written this famous prose work which is called Devotions Upon Emergent Occasions. And if you are wondering why haven't you 
read this work anywhere then I must tell you that though you have not read this work but I'm pretty sure that you must have read this famous line by John Donne which says that no man is an island every man is a part of continent and this line is being taken from devotions upon emergent occasions as far as I know you must remember this thing that though we are looking at poetry of great writers it is also important that we give our attention to the prose works also. Uh, Ernest Hemingway's famous novel For Whom the Bell Toils takes the title from this work, Devotion Upon Emergent Occasions and this work is a collection of 23 prose pieces which were called Meditations and they were dedicated to Charles the First, who is the son of James the First. So you know that there are several things which make this work important and that is why it's important for you that you remember that Devotions Upon Emergent Occasions is a work written by John Donne. Now let's talk about next writer and he is Abraham Cowley. Abraham Cowley, when he was young, he read Edmund Spencer's Fairy Queen twice before he even went to school. So you can imagine how well read this person might have been. Without even attending school, he was able to read and understand Edmund Spencer's Fairy Queen. Like we people, even after completing our graduation and post-graduation, struggle with such great literary works and this chap was able to understand Edmund Spencer's Fairy Queen even without going to school. What is important about Abraham Cowley is that he wrote an elegy on the death of Richard Crashaw and also he contributed to the tradition of Pindaric Odes. He is the person who wrote Pindaric Odes in English for the first time. Later we find several other writers who started writing Pindaric Odes. We have Wordsworth and other great writers who wrote in that tradition but for the first time it was Abraham Cowley who initiated this thing and who started writing Pindaric Odes in English. If you are wondering what are Pindaric Odes, let me tell you that they are simply odes which were written according to the literary tradition of the classical poet Pindar. Okay, so Pindar is a great classical poet who wrote odes which are called Pindaric Odes and people, several writers who came after his death used to imitate the same literary fashion that he used to write in and that is called Pindaric Odes. The next writer that we are going to talk about in this video lecture is Andrew Marvel. I'm pretty sure that you all must know him because you must have come across his really famous poem which is called To His Coy Mistress. What is important to remember about this poem is that there are writers like Anne Finch and A.D. Hope who has written poems from the point of view of the beloved. Like Andrew Marvel wrote the poem from the point of view of the speaker, the male speaker. Whereas three years, 300 years later, we have writers like Anne Finch and A.D. Hope who have written poem from the point of view of beloved. So they are addressing the poem to the speaker, the original speaker of this poem. And we find that, you know, they were quite influenced by the work of Andrew Marvel and it is quite reflected in their other works as well. If you have not check the list of great Australian writers which you must study in order to prepare for UGC Net English then it's high time that you should go to my website arvatakarva.com under the section online course content you will find the list of all important writers that you must cover if you are preparing for UGC Net English. So coming back to my discussion on Andrew Marvel, what you must remember about this fellow is that he has written a work which is called Upon Appleton House. Now Upon Appleton House is a work which is talking about an estate which belonged to Lord Fairfax. Now just like we have ministers these days, during that time we had lords. So uh, this chap Andrew Marvel, he was working as the tutor for the Lord Fairfax's daughter. So while he was uh, you know, teaching her, he was observing the great house where she lived and that somewhere inspired him to write a poem on that house in order to talk about the great architecture, the soberness that it had and non-ornamental -orn nature. So that is what this poem is all about and it is written by Andrew Marvel. One other important thing that you must keep in mind whenever you are studying Andrew Marvel is that he wrote a commentary poem which was published with the second edition of Milton's Paradise Lost and the name of the poem was On Mr. Milton's Paradise Lost. 
So it's a commentary poem which was attached to the second edition of Paradise Lost. So that poem was written by Arjun Marvel and that is why somewhere we must remember this thing because Paradise Lost is one of the most celebrated literary work and any important reference which is attached to such a great work must be remembered. The next writer that we are going to talk about is George Herbert. George Herbert championed the use of concrete poetry or pattern poetry. Now if you are wondering what pattern poetry or concrete poetry is all about, let me tell you that concrete poetry or pattern poetry used topographic space. Topographic space means that when you place the sentences or words in a poem in such a way that they form a visual image on the paper, that is when we call that piece a topographic uh, space piece or we call it a concrete poetry. Now if you look at the works of George Herbert, especially poems like Altered and Easter Wings, you will see that the lines in the poetry are assembled or arranged in such a manner that they form the image on the paper. Uh, in case of Altered and Easter Wings, we find that the image of Altered and Wings are presented on the paper and that is how the visual appeal is added to the poetical sense. So this kind of poetry was earlier used by Jewish people when they used to write early pattern poems which they called Shibiti. Later it was adopted by George Herbert and thus knowing this is very important because he was the first person to use pattern poetry in English literature. So that's it for this video lecture. We'll be meeting soon in the next video lecture. But before you go, I would like to make a very nice announcement. We are starting a very, very important video lecture series from tomorrow. Uh, as I know that you know my students are preparing for December's net exam. But since there are students who are giving July's net exam as well. So on their request, I'm starting a video lecture series which I'll be running uh, for the next one month on every Sunday and I'll be providing you some important tips and tricks which you must remember if you're preparing for July's net exam and how to approach the exam, how to solve the MCQs, how to maintain your composure during the exam uh, time. So all these issues will be addressed from tomorrow on every Sunday. So if you have not subscribed to my channel then do it now so that you are notified every time I post a video. If you have not followed me on the social media platform you can find the links in the description box and you can go to my Facebook, Instagram page and like those pages so that every time I put up a question, a go net quiz, you are notified. If you have not visited my website, then it's high time you should go and do so because I'm pretty sure that once you go through the list of writers that have displayed on my website, you will definitely get a reality check and you'll be able to access your own preparation you can very well understand that how much you have prepared and what all topics you need to work on so with that note i end my video lecture thank you so much keep loving literature and stay tuned to arthadakarva.com